Hello everyone, you're welcome to Intelligentsia Network where we treat uh, topics in geography and right now we're talking on uh, map reading and interpretation. Today we shall be uh, interpreting the relief on the topographical map and we shall be looking at the expected features one should come across within uh, a topographical map. But first, let me use this occasion to uh, appreciate and thank you all who patronize my videos. Those of you who share the videos, I'm so grateful. And so far, I am, I've been able to reach already about 300 subscribers. I really want to thank everyone out there who has patronized these videos. And I pray you continue to do so, so much that knowledge can be shared to other parts of the world. So let's quickly look at what we have as content of today. We said we are going to look at expected related features one should find on a topographical map. And among them, we have features such as a hill. We'll talk about the hill and we'll talk about the various types of hills. We'll look at the north, the southern, and the cold. All these features are mostly found around the hill too. We are going to talk about mountains, valleys. We're going to look at plateaus. And where is a plateau? Obviously, there always, there is always an, an escarpment to accompany it. And on the coastal areas, we expect to find mostly headlands, we expect to find bays, inlets, uh, lagoons, we have cliffs, uh, we can spit, we can name the rest. So, uh, we should recall that in previous lessons where we have done cross section, we were working with the contours, and I told us that contours here are lines that join places of equal elevation or equal height in above sea level. And we have two main contours, the major contours and the minor contours. And we, when, whenever you're drawing a cross section, you should remember that you pay more attention to the major contours because the minor contours are mostly found within the major contours. So uh, uh, the relief features that are also found on the map are always indicated by these contours and the patterns in which the contour takes. When we talk about the patterns in which the contour takes here, we're looking at the degree of closeness or spacing between contours. We are looking at the contour values how they are increasing. Now, when, when contours are very close to each other, we all know that uh, 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 the feature that will result, that will, that will, that will have there will definitely be a steep slope. But where the, where, the, where the contours are spaced out from each other, we rather have a gentle, a gentle slope. So whether it's a hill or a, uh, whether it's a hill or a mountain, it could be steep, it could be gentle. So a highland could be steeper as well as a highland could be a gentle slope. So right away, we're going to begin with the first relief feature, which is here. I'm going to put up on the bot uh, 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 a contour, the contour patterns of the various types of hill. But before that, we have two types of hill which we're talking about here. We have what we call a conical shape hill, and we have uh, a, uh, a conical shape hill or a cone shape hill, and we also have a round top hill. But now, a uh, bonus interest is how this appear on a topographical map. Of course, you will not see, you will not see a hill as such on a topographical map. Definitely, you see a contour, the contour patterns, the way they behave to resort to the various hills that we are going to look at now. So, to begin, I will start first of all to look at what we call a conical, a conical shaped hill. How it appears on a map, conical shaped hill. We have two types of hills, a conical shaped hill and a round top uh, uh, hill. So on the, on, the, on the diagram here, we have two, two different contour patterns. This, which seems to be very close to each other, and the other, which is a bit spaced out from each other. And you should recall that a hill will be any feature where, where, whereby the contours are increasing inwardly. And therefore, as you leave, from, from uh, the, the sea level and move upward, you, the contour values are increasing inwardly. So we're going to plot all this on, on uh, 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 a chart here or on a graph here so much that we see what type of uh, 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 shape will result from this type of contour pattern. So the first one which we have here is contour 300. So I'll simply take it down to where I have contour 300. I'm going to mark out this. The next one is uh, contour 400 meters. I'll take it down to where I have 400 meters. I'm going to mark out. The next is contour 500 meters. Here we have 500. I'm marking out this point. And here we have 
contour 600 meters around here. So I'm going to mark out this point too. Again, contour 600, mark out again, move to 500 meters, mark here, 400, here, and the last one, which is point B, will be 300, mark out here. And therefore, when we join the points together, discover that we're going to have something that shapes up here like cone. I'll call it cone shape here. Right down to 300. So normally, well, uh, on, on the map, we discover that most cone shape, uh, most uh, conical shape fields are always concave in shape, meaning that they always take a shape as such. They always have a shape like this. This is a concave surface. So at the top of it, now you have the cone on, on it. Um, on the other side, we have now a round top, a round top here, which is a uh, form similar, similar like there, the conical shape here, but for the fact that for the round top here, the contour patterns are actually spaced out from each other. And uh, I discovered that at the, at the top of the hill, we're going to have a round surface instead of, instead of a sharp pointing uh, plug like what we have in the conical shape here. So we quickly go into cut this. The first one, which is contour 100 meters. Here we have 100 meters. The next one is 200 meters. I'm cutting here. Uh, the next is 300, which is the highest contour value here. Okay. We repeat again 300. 200 meters around here. And lastly, point B, we have again 100 meters. So if we link up the points together, discover that. Good. So you discover that at this point here, the, 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 the surface of the hill is round as compared to this other point where the, the surface of the hill is rather of a conical shape. So most uh, 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 round top hills, the sides, the flanks of the slope are always convex in nature. So they are always called convex shape hills or the round top hills. So we quickly look at the knobs too. Talk about the knobs, what a knob is. Now we discover that on the hill slope, we have uh, uh, we might have two hills, two hills of equal uh, 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 elevation, as we are going to see on the diagram that we are going to put now on the book. So we are going to talk about now the uh, the null, the saddle, and the cone. How you can find them on the map? I think we must we must have seen these on most maps. A feature like this one on most maps. When you see such feature, you just know you're dealing with a, a null, the saddle, and, and, and it may, may be a cool, but in this situation here, we have just a null and the saddle. So, these two, these two uh, features are the nulls. The null are similar to hues, just like the round top hue or the conical shape hues that we've mentioned. But we, we, it's peculiar here because it occurs on, on both sides and we discover that they are mostly of almost equal elevation. Here we have contour. 500 meters, which means that at this elevation here is 500 meters. Here we have a spot height of 525 meters, which means that the difference is not really that much. And we can term these hills here as knobs because they are going to be separated by a valley, which we call a saddle. And most of the times on the map, you discover that a saddle is always used for economic purposes like the construction of, of roads, which, which cut across the saddle. So you discover, here we are going to plot out from a point, let's say point A to point B, we're going to cross each other like this. From point A to point B. Okay. Good. We call this a point A and this other one, point B. So if I, if I have to plot this, from this point here, this is contour, 200 meters. So I'll follow straight to where I have 200 meters and I mark 200 meters. The next one is uh, 300 meters. It is not numbered, but we should know that since we have 200 meters here and 
400 meters, it means in between 200 and, and 400 is 300 meters. It's a similar case with, with contour 500 we have next. So here we have, we have contour 300 meters. I'm going to plot this down. It might not be too straight. Uh, the next one is contour 400. Okay, yeah, this contour 400. Good. And now we have 500 meters. So we're not going to be dealing with, with the spot height since we are working with the graph paper and the graph papers will not have 525 meters here. We will just consider that there was a spot height around that area. We will move, we'll move to the next uh, point to extrapolate, which is a uh, contour 500 meters. We will see that again. Around here we have 500 meters. And the land starts falling back down from 500 to 400 meters, 400 to 300 meters. And now we come back this way. We look at these this 200 meters, and therefore here we have 300, 400, 500. So we mark this point to 300 meters. And on here, good. The next one is 400. Here we have 500. Okay. 500 meters. 500 meters again. Here we have 400. Here we have 300. And point B. My last point, extrapolate very well, it gives us 200 meters. So if you have to join the points together, link up the points together, we have something that slopes as such. That slopes down a lot. If you remember the principle of drawing a cross section, a certain thing which I, which I emphasize that the students must follow up when drawing a cross section. So I don't want to make a mistake. Good. So this point here, this is a null. And the same point here, we also have a null. So the two nulls are being separated by a depression, which we call it a saddle. The saddle. In a situation whereby the depression is not that, that wide, we will now refer to it now as a cone. If you had been if the depression was very narrow, they will refer to that word as, as a cone. So here we have a very stiff flank. We have stiff flanks. The stiff flanks are the same like the stiff flanks are the same like the stiff slopes. Stiff slopes. Yeah, the slope is gentle, meaning that you can easily climb a gentle slope. A gentle slope. And then you have a road. So uh in the next video, we shall be working on how to identify a mountain and a valley, plateau and its comment, and the headlands, bays and cliff. Remember, dear friends, to share these videos to your friends, share these videos to uh, uh, your classmates. It might be very useful to them. I still want to thank all of you for patronizing my, my, my videos and for sharing. Keep up and we hope to see you in the next class. Thank you very much.